Semper Vivi here with you for the next hour talking about professional wrestling, which is something we do every single day here on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Tune in, iHeart, American Forces Radio, sportsbyline.com. Over-the-air affiliates like KMAV, 99KMSR, WYOH, and many others. Maybe you're listening via podcast or replay on SiriusXM, or maybe you're video streaming on Twitch or YouTube. However you're joining me today, I'd just like to say thank you. Hopefully, wherever you are, it's sunny outside. If not, hopefully it's sunny inside your mind. There sounds like there's a swirling windstorm taking place outside. There's like 40 and 50 mile per hour wind gusts where I'm at. So sorry if you hear that and it ruins the sonic experience for you. At least it's a bright, clear day. And it is after it gets done blowing away, it's supposed to be a beautiful weekend. 62 and 67 degrees on Saturday and Sunday. Sunny, hopefully, for everybody traveling to Philadelphia next week. I'm about two hours south. Hopefully that is the weather that you get for WrestleMania. Filthy Tom Lawler will not be joining me today as he is down in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, getting ready to be a part of tonight's MLW War Chamber show. The show streams on Triller TV beginning at 8 p.m., and I'll let you know some of the details on that show later on, but we have a lot to get into today. And I'll start now with some news on disgraced former WWE and TKO executive chairman Vince McMahon. Yesterday, Variety was the first to report that an official Securities and Exchange Commission filing revealed that McMahon has unloaded more of his TKO stock McMahon sold off roughly three and a half million of his shares for approximately $100 million. That makes a total of $1.2 billion that McMahon has netted through his sales of TKO stock, including $408 million worth earlier this month and $670 million worth sold off last November. McMahon still owns 11.5 million shares of TKO Group, which is currently valued at $1 billion. After we get back from break, we'll have a lot more WWE news. No surprise there. SmackDown is live tonight, and we have four matches and one segment announced. Hopefully after tonight, we have a better idea on what the WrestleMania card is going to be. The Blackpool Combat Club has invaded Mexico along with Matt Seidel and Willow Nightingale. We'll talk about that CMLL show as well as a whole lot more. Join me after we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Welcome back to the show. Mike Sempervivi here with you. You know we do this show right here for an hour at a time every single day. But if you want us 24-7, you can find us on Twitter slash X. I am at Sempervivi. The website is at W-O-N-F-4-W. And the broadcaster is at Sports Byline USA. Jim Valley's here with you on Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific. And Andrew Zarian takes the reins on Sundays starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. I'd also love it if you made the wrestling news part of your day, everything you need to know to get your day started or get you up to date. Each episode of the wrestling news is between 5 and 15 minutes long every single day, and it's usually posted at about 9 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time. No clickbait. No speculation or rumors, just the wrestling news. You can find it wherever you get your podcasts or head on over to thewrestlingnews.com and at Wrestling News AV on X and Twitter. The F4W Wrestling Observer Convention takes place Memorial Day weekend, and I'll give you the details on that in the next segment. All of the information is available on the front page of the website as well as F4WOnline.com slash Vegas. WWE SmackDown is live tonight on Fox from the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut. Uncasville. In an Instagram post on Friday, The Rock shared footage of what happened after Raw went off the air. After being told the the show was over, The Rock continued to whip Rhodes with his weight belt and continued to keep taunting Rhodes' mother, quote, What? The show is over and then it stops? F that. The Rock screamed, your script, F that. (laughs) It was a great, a great segment. As you see camera phone footage that is, uh, which is horizontal, by the way, or uh, it is vertical, not horizontal. It's very annoying, but they, they had it and it showed The Rock and it showed The Rock getting the camera crew and screaming at them to get back in because he's continuing to lay the beat down and continue to whip Cody and 
did a hell of a job with it, as Dave has talked about on Wrestling Observer Radio. With Dwayne, he wants it to be real and as real as possible. And he's brought real interest into everything that's been going on in real drama. That is for sure. We've got real blood as well, too. And as Dave talks about in this week's Wrestling Observer Newsletter, don't plan on seeing a whole lot of that. But the door is open for it to, when it's time to use it, be utilized and have it utilized very well as it was on Monday night after Raw. Tonight on SmackDown, we have four matches and one segment that is official. Dakota Kai will face off against Bianca Belair. There are two qualifying matches for the six-pack ladder match at WrestleMania. Austin Theory and Grayson Waller against the Street Profits. And New Catch Republic, Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate against Legado del Fantasma's Angel Garzo and Humberto Carrillo. Also, Kevin Owens and Randy Orton will face off against Pretty Deadly. It's going to be interesting to see how that goes because obviously you're going to need some drama between Kevin Owens and Randy Orton in that match. But them also playing off of Pretty Deadly ought to be pretty entertaining. And Jade Cargill will make her first official appearance as a member of the SmackDown roster. In this week's Wrestling Observer Newsletter, I've said that a lot today. It's available for subscribers up on the front page right now. Dave is talking about there being 13 matches for WrestleMania weekend. Seven on one night, six on another night. That seems to be the working plan right now. When you look at what we have, Roman Reigns and The Rock against Cody and Rollins, that's night one. Night two, Roman Reigns against Cody Rhodes. Also on night two, at least we will assume it will be, Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre. EO Sky against Bailey, Rhea Ripley against Becky Lynch, Gunther against Sami Zayn, LA Knight and AJ Styles, Jey Uso against Jimmy Uso, Logan Paul against Randy Orton against Kevin Owens for the US title, and the men's tag team six pack ladder match for the tag team titles. That would leave us three matches to go if what Dave is saying is correct. The women's tag team title will likely be on the line. Kyrie and Asuka against Naomi and, Bian- Naomi and Bianca Belair. That seems to be the most obvious thing. One, it gets Bianca Belair on the show. And two, with the Dakota Kai-Bianca Belair match and the story they've been telling about Bianca talking to Naomi about her friendship with Bailey. We saw that all kind of come to a head last week. We have definitive sides laid out. So that is probably going to be one of the matches left to go on those two nights. One of them, again, also, too, and I could be dead wrong about this, but when it comes to the six-pack ladder match, we have Finn Balor and Damian Priest. We have DIY, The New Day, and Awesome Truth. You got three babyface tag teams in there from Raw. It only makes sense to me that Austin Theory and Grayson Waller, two young guys who WWE obviously wants to be part of their future, makes sense to me that they would be in that match And the Street Profits, it leaves them open to then team with Bobby Lashley against AOP and Karrion Cross. You can throw in B-Fab and and Scarlet Bordeaux if you want to. You still have Paul Elring at ringside as well, too, for AOP and Karrion Cross. But that seems to make the most sense for a match to happen. So in that case, Theory and Waller can go on be in the ladder match. When it comes to New Catch Republic against Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo tonight, it's really interesting Garza and Carrillo would probably be perfect to be in that match, but it's not like Dunn and and Bate wouldn't be perfect to be in there as well, too. So that's kind of a toss-up right now as far as who can make it in. I'll say Dunn and Bate just because the last match, if we have 13 spots left to go, in my opinion, the way it looks, Rey Mysterio Jr., Carlito, and Dragon Lee against Santos Escobar, Angel Garza, and Alberto Carrillo, if they go ahead and lose tonight, that seems to make a lot of sense to me. What also makes sense, though, is to add a couple of people to that mix. Because if you're not going to do like a one-on-one match between Rey and Santos, and that doesn't look like it's going to be the case, 
Well, why not throw in Dominic Mysterio and J.D. McDonough on that side and then Joaquin Wilde and Cruz del Toro on the side of Rey Mysterio, Carlito, and Dragon Lee? That seems like a 10-man tag would be, I think, a really cool Lucha-based match with Carlito in there. I think that could actually be a really fun way to open up one of the nights or at least be there as a break with all of the other stuff that you have going on. So I think there's going to be some combination that way. And then that gives us 13 matches. If you wanted to even out the show, you could have a 14th match because... You don't really have anything left for some of the women that are there. So you could do some sort of, you could do a women's battle royal, especially if you do a men's battle royal on next week's SmackDown, have that Andre the Giant Memorial. You could do that on Friday and you could add a women's battle royal on one of the two WrestleMania nights that could come down to Tiffany Stratton, Nia Jax, and Jade Cargill. Wouldn't be the worst idea in the world. Doesn't have to be done, but... Again, if you're going to even out the card, maybe that could work. But again, tonight after SmackDown, we should have a real good idea on what they're going to be offering in full for WrestleMania. And we'll see if they wait until next week before they start divvying up the days so everybody's going to know what they're going to have. Two WrestleMania house shows, uh, Road to WrestleMania house shows this weekend. Uh, for those of you in the Manchester, New Hampshire area on Saturday, WWE is going to be the SNHU Arena. And on Sunday at the War Memorial Arena in Syracuse, New York, that will lead them in on Monday night to the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. That's where Raw is taking place. The only thing we have announced for that show so far is an eight-man tag team match between DIY and The New Day against The Judgment Day in full. Damian Priest, Dominic Mysterio, Finn Balor, and J.D. McDonough. Got some more news on WrestleMania, as well as Kenny Omega, and a whole lot more when we get back from break on Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper VB here with you, Wrestling Observer Live. You know, I haven't done this for a while since I've stayed away from the energy drinks, but I have one of these uh, Sprite Tropical mixes right here. So here you go for all the ASMR kids. Listen in as the wind whips around in the background. Not as dramatic as a can opening, that's for sure. Hey, folks, not only is there wind during this time of year, it is also the time of year where there is the F4W Wrestling Observer Convention set for Las Vegas, Nevada, Memorial Day weekend, as it always is. Go to the front page of the website for details on this, but I'm going to give them to you right now if you're driving around, if you're one of the truckers out there who make radio and podcasting so wonderful because, well, you guys need content when you're on the road, and we really appreciate you, you know, listening to us. We, we really do. I appreciate that at least, okay? I do. Anyway, this is what it says here on this website. We welcome current subscribers, past subscribers, friends, family, wrestlers, pets, and anyone else that wants to come along. Pets. Little people with pets? Eh. Anyway, doesn't matter. Little person, big person, medium-sized person. Doesn't matter your race, creed, or color. Doesn't matter your religion. Everybody is welcome to come. Maybe not all of you at the sweet party at one time because we want there to be a good time there. But anyway, again, every, as long as everybody acts all right, it'd be fine. A lot of stuff taking place Friday, May 24th through Sunday, May 26th. There are things you can buy tickets for, including the all-you-can-eat dinner at Texas Day Brazil, a meet-and-greet with Brian Alvarez and Vincent Verhey, followed by a live Q&A session. Pro Wrestling as promoted by Ed in San Antonio. It is Poder Seis, a sweet party. There's going to be details on that coming soon, so keep your eyes peeled to the website. And an annual brunch at the Wicked Spoon. Again, you can buy tickets for any of those events. Get them before they sell out because they do actually sell out. Any questions, you can go ahead and drop them a line. Hopefully everybody enjoys their time in Vegas. Hopefully Brian and Vinny see you all out there. I will not be out there. I don't leave my house much anymore. The beach is very close. That's pretty much all I need. I won't be going to Philadelphia either, but a lot of you are. In fact, so many of you are that WWE has added seats. 
They have raised the capacity to 62,251 for both nights, according to today's Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Night 1 is currently at 59,876 tickets sold, with 2,570 of those on the secondary market, with a get-in price of $148.00. Night 2 has 61,197 tickets out with 2,380 on the secondary market with a get-in price of $189. So right now it's going to cost you at least around 190 bucks for one ticket to get in if you have not already. Dave notes that the prices have dropped noticeably over the last two weeks, even as the storylines have heated up, but that is the usual pattern that these secondary market tickets usually take. So a lot of people going to be in there for those two nights right now. Also in this week's edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave Meltzer provided a status update on AEW star Kenny Omega. And it's not super positive. This was posted up to the main page of the website earlier today by Joseph Courier. So if you want to check out the story, you can go ahead and do that. Omega, of course, has been out of action since December due to diverticulitis. Uh, quote, while no decision has been made, it looks more likely than not that Kenny Omega will be getting surgery on his intestines. He's had his ups and downs, but has largely been dealing with a good amount of pain for months now. He said surgery is becoming more and more likely as two different doctors have told him they think it's the best option. It's not 100% that he will have surgery, but it's looking more likely, particularly if he wants to get into condition to resume his career, that he will probably have to get rid of the perforated sections of his intestine and colon. Later, Dave writes, we keep going back to Davey Boy Smith Jr. and Brock Lesnar, bo who both returned at a high level, and both of their situations were very bad as well, but Omega's situation was legitimately life-threatening, end quote on that. So all the best to Kenny Omega. Looks like he's going to be facing surgery. Not sure how long that would keep him out for, but... It is probably going to be a, a significant period of time when you include the rehabilitation time that he's going to need before he comes back just to get his body back up to par to get back into the gym to do the work that he needs to do to get back into the ring. So maybe a long time before we see Kenny Omega again. AEW Collision will be in London, Ontario on Saturday night inside the Budweiser Gardens. Next week's show... Next Saturday's Collision will be airing at 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So that is when that is going to be taking place, is getting pushed back. I believe it's due to basketball. It will come on basically a half hour after WrestleMania 1 is over. I'd have to look at the schedule, and I admit I have not done that for every single independent show that is going to be taking place, so I'm not sure if it's also going to be doing battle with Joey Janela's Spring Break or anything like that, but I'm sure there's going to be a card going off at least one, if not probably seven, is somewhere in Philadelphia or in southern Jersey that weekend, that night. So next week's collision, again, 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time. This is going to be the last one this week uh, that, that's on schedule. Six-man tag team match, Lance Archer and the Righteous against the Blackpool Combat Club. Brian Danielson and Claudio Castagnoli, that is. They'll team with Katsuyori Shibata. So hopefully there are no flight delays getting out of Mexico. I'll, I'll get to why later on here. Hopefully the BCC makes it on time to uh, London, Ontario. That's a hell of a trip. After wrestling in Arena Mexico, Mexico tonight in Mexico City, skipping up to London, Ontario, Kyle O'Reilly will be facing a mystery opponent. AEW TNT title, the Cope Open, has returned. Adam Copeland, in his Open Challenge, he'll have an opponent. Uh, AEW World Tag Team title tournament quarterfinal matches Big Bill and Ricky Starks against Top Flight and FTR against the Infantry. So there you go. That's what's coming up on Saturday. We'll see how the ratings go. Again, a lot of basketball this weekend. Major League Baseball has started up. You got the NCAA 
women's basketball tournament, which has gotten the most attention uh, this year uh, as it ever has because of just the boom of women's college basketball in the media's eyes this year. But uh, Dynamite on TBS Wednesday night. No other way to say it. It tripped and fell pretty significantly when it came to its rating. It averaged 747,000 viewers, its lowest total since April 7th, 2021. It's the third show in the last four weeks that was under 800,000 viewers. In the 18- to 49-year-old demo, the show's .23 rating and 301,000 viewers is the lowest it has done, Dynamite, that is, since October 23rd, 2021. That show aired on a Saturday. When it comes to its normal Wednesday night slot, it is the the worst that the show has done since June 24th, 2020, and is tied for the second lowest of all time on that day. That said, it was still the third ranked show on cable TV in that demo for the night. It trailed two basketball games, uh, NBA basketball games on ESPN. Everything else that night between 4 and 14 were either ESPN or Fox News shows. So the next closest thing came in at number 15, and that was the NHL game on TNT. Remember TNT? They used to air Dynamite. That game was Boston and Tampa Bay, and this is always something that drives wrestling fans a little bit crazy when it comes to the NHL's ratings in relation to AEW or WWE or anything else. That NHL game finished with a .13 18-49 to 49 rating and 472,000 viewers. So AEW did kick the NHL's butt, but it doesn't matter. Once again, under 800,000. So everybody out there that likes to either make fun of AEW or defend themselves uh, from WWE, have a field day with all that sort of stuff. There you go. CMLL tonight, as I mentioned earlier on, as they do every Friday night inside Arena Mexico, but they've got some special visitors. The show is completely sold out, sold out way in advance, which is really something else because that and it's it's just a rarity when it comes to shows in Mexico. They still rely on people walking up to the show the night of or the day of to sell tickets. But this show's completely sold out. It is available through streaming, through CMLL's subscription YouTube site. If you go to YouTube, I believe, I think the minimum to watch the these shows, I think it's $24.99 for all the live shows. You'd have to go in and check. It's all listed right there. But two out of three falls, eight-man tag team match. Wheeler Yuta could not make it. Matt Seidel filling in alongside John Moxley, Claudio, and Brian Danielson as they take on Blue Panther, Mystico, Ultimo Guerrero, and Volador Jr. Apparently Blue Panther putting the mask back on tonight. Uh, also, the Torneo Increíble de Parejas. Yeah, I'm sure I butchered that. You know, basically is what happens here is a good guy teams with a bad guy and they face another good guy and another bad guy. That's what's going to be happening there. They've had a tournament last week. Came down to the finals for tonight. Atlantis Jr. teams with Soberano Jr. to face off against our own Rocky Romero and Mascara Dorada. I'll let you know a couple other special notes about that show, including what Willow Nightingale is going to be doing and a whole lot more when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Except for here with you, Wrestling Observer Live. No Filthy Tom Lawler, no Brian Alvarez. They'll be back with you on Monday. Filthy Ford Daily, he and Brian. is one of your perks that you get as a member of WrestlingObserver.com. I assume Brian Alvarez is going to be back with me and all of you for free over these airwaves on Wrestling Observer Live come Monday. We'll, we'll find out. Distracted here. It's opening day for those teams that were rained out yesterday. Curly right now, if you do nothing but listen to sports byline all day, you always have it on in the car. You're wondering what's going on in the baseball games because you you don't really know what's going on with wrestling, but you, you obviously you can't turn the dial to anything else. Milwaukee up 3-1 right now in the New York Mets, bottom of the seventh. The Atlanta Braves, Philadelphia Phillies, 0-0 right now, top of the third. There's your baseball update. 
Take it back to your Arena Mexico update. Blackpool Combat Club, as I mentioned, going to be down there with Matt Seidel in that match against Blue Panther, Mystico, Ultima Guerrero, and Volador Jr. Also, Willow Nightingale makes her. I, I don't know if it's her first appearance in Mexico or not. I, I, it may be. I would, would assume that it is, at least for CMLL. Don't know. Doesn't matter. She's there. She'll be teaming with Tessa Blanchard and La Catalina to face off against Juvia, Zeusis, and Stephanie Vaquer. Mask versus mask four-way match. Get the, the minis in there. Get the little people in there. Uh, there's a four-way, uh, again, mask versus mask. I'm not going to go through everybody there. CMLL World Light Heavyweight title match. This ought to be pretty good. Averno will challenge El Barbaro Cavanario Esfinge against Zadnikon Jr. for the Mexican National Light Heavyweight title. And the Mexican National Tag Team title will be on the line in the opening match. Magnus and Rugido against Briante Jr. and Neon. Major League Wrestling, as I told you, was tonight. I lied about where it was taking place. I think I said Fort Lauderdale in the opening. It's actually in St. Petersburg, Florida. Tonight at the Coliseum War Chamber, which is their war games. It's going to be available on Triller TV. MLW World Champion Satoshi Kojima teams with Okamura and the second gear crews Manders and Matthew Justice against St. Lorenz World Titan Federation, for which your man and ours, Filthy Tom Lawler, is a proud member. He is one half of the MLW World Tag Team Champions alongside Davey Boy Smith Jr. They will team with Josh Bishop and Richard Holiday, and blood will very likely be spilled. How much plunder is involved? <laughs> well, it's, it's Matthew Justice and Manders, so you expect a little bit there. Okamura kind of stands out in this, but he's had his presence here in MLW alongside with Satoshi Kojima. So if you're a subscriber to Triller, that is available to you. Also on that show, New Japan World Television title match. Matt Riddle will defend against Kosei Fujita. Also, MLW World Women's Featherweight title, Janai Kai, will defend against Unagi Sayaka. And Alex Kane, who will have Mr. Thomas in his corner, will face off against AJ Francis. AJ Francis has tried to sow some dissension between Alex Kane and Mr. Thomas. We'll see what happens there. MLW will run television tapings in the same building on Saturday. And A.J. Francis is a popular name when it comes to today's news as the former top dollar in WWE has signed a deal officially with TNA Wrestling that extends throughout 2024. That is according to a report on Thursday from Fightful Select. The contract reportedly allows him to continue working for New Japan Pro Wrestling as well as the NWA, but prohibits him from working with WWE or AEW. You can throw MLW into the mix as far as companies he's allowed to work for, obviously. Francis was released by the WWE for the second time last fall. TNA Wrestling, as I mentioned, one of the places that Francis has turned up. Impact was last night with matches that were taped last Friday at the 2300 Arena in Philadelphia. In the main event of the show, Steve Macklin defeated Chris Sabin. As uh, we've heard uh, recently, sounds like Chris Sabin and Alex Shelley will be departing Impact at some point. Going to be interesting to see where they end up. Steph DeLander made her return to TNA, defeating Rosemary, Zia Brookside, and Danny Luna in a four-way match after outside interference from Matt Cardona. To now, as a result of that, she becomes the number one contender for the Knockouts title. Earlier in the show, the four women in that match earned their spots by defeating Havoc, Jody Threat, Alicia Edwards, and Masha Slamovich in an eight-woman tag match. Also on the show, Eddie Edwards defeated Speedball Mike Bailey. The Grizzled Young Veterans defeated Cody Deaner in a handicap match. And Josh Alexander beat Tracy Williams in an open challenge match. After the match, Hammerstone ran in and attacked both Alexander and Williams. Josh Alexander will be in London on Sunday at York Hall for the Rev Pro Revolution Rumble show that is going to be taking place. I'm not sure about anything else that's going to be taking place on that card, but Josh Alexander is going to be on it. 
Ring of Honor was also last night streamed on Honor Club, had matches that were taped on March 27th in Q City, March 16th in Ottawa, and March 13th in Boston. The main event of that show was Kyle Fletcher successfully defending the ROH World TV title against Blake Christian. ROH World Women's Champion Athena had another non-title proving ground match, and she defeated Nikita in other results. Uh, just I actually really, the, the other results don't really matter all that much. There's always a ton of matches on that. No, no offense to anybody out there, but that was the key stuff that you need to know about as we roll into next week. And Super Card of Honor, which is streaming on Honor Club next Friday from the LaCora Center on North Broad Street in Philadelphia. Again, uh, for anybody that's going to be coming around, I'm not sure where you're going to be staying when it comes to Philadelphia, but as far as everything being in a, a pretty good, you know, location and all right next to each other and, and straight down the line you're very lucky with this year's wrestlemania there's not going to be a whole lot of drama with a bunch of, of shows taking place in like brooklyn and a bunch in north jersey and this that and the third like it was a couple of years ago and that's why everybody including brian alvarez hates going to new york for wrestlemania it should be smooth sailing if you do all of your planning out before you get to town but, again, the ROH show, Super Guard of Honor, world champion Eddie Kingston defends against Mark Briscoe. I just saw a video package that was on ROH TV last night, an outstanding video package of Mark Briscoe saying that's, that's where it all started for them, 16 years old, wrestling at the, at the, uh, the old ECW arena, uh, wrestling in Philadelphia for Ring of Honor, the Ring of Honor originals. I just don't see how could you, how could you, how could you have Mark Briscoe take an L on this night next Friday in Philadelphia? Ain't gonna happen. Eddie Kingston is going to lose that ROH World Championship. Athena will defend her ROH Women's Title against Hikaru Shida. I say unless Hikaru Shida is going to be in Ring of Honor for a extended period of time and I, I guess I could see why you'd want to do that working with many of the women on the roster unless she's going to be there full time no reason to put the belt on her she can be far utilized far better with the women that you're bringing in and the women that you have over in a on AEW proper so Athena I'll give her the duke here Kyle Fletcher against Lee Johnson Probably going to be a hell of a match. Probably going to be just a lightning. Probably going to be, you know be a surprise. Hopefully, Lee Johnson, big shotty here, big opportunity for him because obviously there's been a lot of groundswell of support for Kyle Fletcher as far as being the next Osprey, the next breakout star, whatever you want to call him. But I would think that he holds on to his title here. But this could be a big, you know, big, big opportunity for Lee Johnson if he shows off just as much as Fletcher is expected to. Women's Television Championship Tournament Final: Queen Aminata against Billy Starks could go either way. I could understand it going either way. I'm still taking Aminata. They have now added though, Mina Shirakawa, World of Stardom Champion Micah, and May Sierra. Facing off against Azumi, Tam Nakano, and Saya Kamitani. That ought to be awesome. That ought to be really fun. Uh, Stardom, they're going to be in town anyway. And they finally announced, now that we have a, a match added to ROH, we know a, a, a lineup for American Dream 2024 in the Keystone State. They have very long show titles. That show is taking place Thursday night at the already sold out 2300 arena in philadelphia world of stardom title micah against megan bain mina shirakawa mariah may and zaya brookside the original club venus gets back together to face mayu iwatani tam nakano and momo kogo Suri and konami against willow nightingale and saki triple threat for the high speed title may sierra against saki kashima and ram kaichao and also Stephanie Vacare, Momo Watanabe, and Starlight Kid against Saya Kamatani, Azumi, and Cameron Branye. I, I, I don't know who that is. I haven't seen them wrestle yet, so don't know who Cameron Branye is, but I apologize if I'm butchering your name. Taking a little look at Japan Saturday, 
New Japan Pro Wrestling, the first of four shows that will lead into Sakura Genesis, which takes place on April 6th. Mostly tag team matches on that show for the most part. Also taking place this weekend, All Japan, Saturday at the Oda City General Gymnasium. Katsuhiko Nakajima will defend the Triple Crown against Yuma Anzai. And then Noah Star Navigation takes place on Sunday at Korokin Hall. So there is a lot of stuff that is going to be taking place this weekend. There's going to be just a ridiculous amount that is going to be going on next week. Again, I haven't even looked forward to seeing all of the matches that are going to be taking place. The Collective, I think, is good for, what, at least nine matches, something like that, or nine shows at least, something like that. You got the the Russell Con shows will all be taking place. The Mark Hitchcock Memorial will be going on. Just a ton of stuff, plus all of the meet and greets as well, too. I saw the meet and greet prices. I think it's $50 per wrestler. For stardom during the meet and greets that are going to be taking place i think they're even much higher i think it's what 150 dollars to get in the door for wwe world something like that for some of the stuff that they have going on so there's gonna be a lot of promotions who are going to be making a ton of money coming up over uh the wrestlemania weekend and you know i i wondered a couple of years ago i really did if aew was going to usurp not necessarily WrestleMania weekend and with shows running, but was going to take a lot of that attention for their weekends and have a lot of those independent promotions come and run wherever they are, like Memorial Day weekend when they're there for uh, for for Double or Nothing or whatever the hell the show is. It, you know, I can't remember the names of all these things, even though I talked about it earlier on. You know. I thought that was going to kind of be where everybody would, would converge because AEW uses so many people from the indies and seemed to be so much friendlier, you know, to the indies than WWE was. Well, now with what we've got with WWE working with GCW, again, hopefully we get Omos against Blake Christian for the GCW title. I still want that to happen. But with this new regime in charge, with them looking at anything that anybody else is doing as a way to be manipulated into being beneficial for them well it's like wwe is going to continue to be the, the magnet that, that pulls everybody in for these types of weekends how'd you like that film to get to the end of the segment mike sempervivi wrestling observer live so mike sempervivi here to put a bow on this thing According to Drew McIntyre, his segment with CM Punk and Seth Rollins from Monday's Raw was not heavily scripted. I think we know that. Joseph Courier posted this up to the front page of the site about seven minutes ago. McIntyre, Punk, and Rollins traded insults during a standout segment on Raw this week. I thought it was, at least. Brian is still trying to figure out why it's so weird. Oh, it's so weird. Everybody hates each other. Stop it. Who cares? It was good. Who cares? I don't care if they hate each other. I don't care if they hate you. Well, Brian, we know one of them hates you, but that doesn't matter right now. What matters is it was a good segment. It went to almost 20 minutes long, but it was good. But Drew McIntyre appeared on the Torg and Elliott radio show on QFM 96 in Columbus, Ohio. They're, why did I just say their names? They're, they're not part of this Sports Byline radio network. I apologize for that, Darren. Just striking that from the record. Anyway, he was on there and talked about there only being an outline for the show. And they went out there and just had themselves a war of words. And it was absolutely fantastic. Still, technically, apparently, reportedly, allegedly, Drew McIntyre has not re-signed with WWE as of yet. It is completely impossible for me to believe that he will not resign there. Why would he why would he go anywhere else? I don't care what money can possibly be thrown by AEW with Drew McIntyre, and they can throw a lot of money at him. No way. He is in a perfect position right now. A lot of stories still to be told with him. Remember everybody, Damian Priest still has that briefcase. Interesting. It'll be interesting to see what happens with the Judgment Day in general. We see some courting of Andrade going on there. So all really interesting stuff. If you're a WWE fan, if you're not, believe me, there's enough out there for you to be interested in. 
gonna be all whiny and bitchy and complainy about things. Hey, Jingu! Oh, I guess we've come to the end of hearing Brian say no, Jingu! Jingo's apparently going to be leaving us for a while. Hopefully he'll be back, as we will be on Monday on this show. Thank you, all of you producers, all of you listeners, all of you viewers. We shall talk to you again after a while.